Tech, thanks for joining us tonight. Good to see you. Uh, yeah, we have a actually an interesting show. Lots of news on the C8 Corvette performance model. So that's the main thing I want to talk about. But um, yeah, before we do get started, though, let me um, just go over some of the latest videos if you haven't seen them. Uh, the I had the a Jeep Compass as a loaner vehicle my Cherokee was in. It was in service, ready to get the transmission, and they decided they wanted to try a valve body instead of the full transmission first, which, you know, is not going to do anything. It, it hasn't, I haven't noticed much difference with it. So it's going to have to go back again to get the actual transmission, but um, I have to put some miles on it before I can do that. So unfortunately, that video is delayed. I told you guys it was going to be uh, uh, pretty quick here after that Compass video, but um, yeah, stay tuned for that one. And uh, also, last week's video was a video on the Supra, did a little intake mod, pretty cool. can hear the turbo whistle a little more. Now, especially with the windows down, sounds pretty cool. I am still looking to get an intake for that car, but um, as of right now, uh, nothing on the market that is out that I like. So I'm waiting for something that I like. I like a closed box design and haven't seen one yet uh, because I don't want to get that intake air from the engine. So... But anyway, the other thing I want to tell you guys, if, if definitely follow me on Instagram and Facebook if you haven't, so you can see when I'm going to do these streams. If I do these again, I'm going to find something different. But I also did post something on there and on this YouTube community tab, which I'm not sure how many people really um, see. But yeah, I got another press vehicle, and it's one I'm really excited about. It's the Toyota 86 Hakone Edition. It's a stark green, really cool color. And um, I want to compare it to the Supra. I know it's a different price point and everything, but same kind of lighter weight sports car. It is a manual, this one. So uh, pretty cool, pretty excited to be in it. And I really haven't spent a lot of time in these, but I uh, just. They just dropped it off today. I have it for the next week. So I'll be uh, doing making videos on it. Let me know if you guys want anything uh, in particular uh, that you want me to um, report on. But uh, yeah, I'm real excited to have it. Uh, Thomas says that's a sharp looking 86. Yeah, it's a special edition for this year. It's actually, there's some tan leather trim inside on the seats and dash. And um, I like it. I, green is coming back. Uh, it, it was very popular in the 90s. It's making a comeback. Of course, my Jeep there parked next to it is green, a different kind of green. I love green, actually. Uh, probably my second favorite uh, besides blue. Uh, I love the blue sports cars, but I also love green Jeeps. So, But this is pretty cool. I got to see it. Um, I'd like to see it in the sun. Uh, it was kind of cloudy here uh, when they dropped it off. And um, so hopefully I get some good video and pictures of it. Um, Carter 11 says Wild Keller. Yeah, it is different. And again, this is only available on this special edition, which is pretty much fully loaded, except it's not available with the TRD package, unfortunately, which is the larger brakes um different tires and uh the sock sock stampers so but anyway let's get to what you've all probably been waiting to talk about is the C8 performance model so last week Haggerty Media posted this article and they do they talk to all the suppliers and everything and they posted pretty they pretty much spelled out every performance model we're going to get with the C8 and um 
it's pretty extensive actually and there's charts right here we're pretty much going to leave it on this so you guys can see it hopefully you guys can see it um now some of this may be delayed there's uh the years broken down here model 2021 through 2025 this may be delayed with everything going on right now and gm has said that they have uh paused new product development so this could definitely potentially be delayed but interesting thing about this there is tons of info on the powertrains of the new models now first of all for the C8, we just have the Stingray right now and the Stingray Z51, which is the performance package of the C8. And you can get 495 horsepower with the Z51. That includes the performance exhaust and 470 pound-feet of torque. So that is confirmed power. Um, we are supposed to get the convertible version of the C8 Stingray. At this point, I don't know. That could also be delayed for to 2021. The plant is still closed right now. So 2020s have not resumed production. They only made a few thousand before the shutdown. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. There, a lot of the 2020 orders will probably be, become 2021s and therefore may push out the model years for these new models. So the first thing not too big a deal is right hand drive versions of the corvette for export so europe's going to be getting them uh probably middle east stuff like that so that is coming for export pretty cool which uh never has been done before on the corvette even the uh c7 was not right hand drive but okay, now we get to interesting stuff. The next model coming is the Corvette Z06. And again, this is following the normal product line like C7, Z06 came, then Grand Sport, then ZR1. But anyway, we're gonna start with the C8 Z06. This is, I guess, not really a surprise anymore, but it's gonna get the LT6, what they're calling it. It's a 5.5 liter. 32 valve dual overhead cam flat plane crank v8 and this is this is basically the c8r engine well i don't know if exactly that engine how 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 close it is but that there is a 5.5 liter v8 in the c8r and they're estimating 600 horsepower 470 pound feet of torque which is actually less than today's or the c7 z06 but it's also naturally aspirated this time and anyone that knows the c7 had we had some issues with overheating in the c7 and um especially on track so they're going back to naturally aspirated which i'm thrilled about now a little bit less horsepower and it's going to be um it's going to be less torque as well being naturally aspirated but it's going to have that flat plane crank high revving probably uh eight to nine thousand rpm i don't know if they say it in this article yeah 8500 to nine thousand rpm and of course it's going to have that dual clutch transmission for super quick shifts and uh yeah car and driver had this article I i'm excited for it i'm excited for this one now the and it should have <laughs> better looking wheels uh, that fill the uh, arches. And this doesn't look like a wide body to me, but it should have a wide bar body as well. Thomas says, saving myself for that GS. Yeah, so let's move on to that GS. That's a very interesting one as well. Now, again, they're saying 2022 for Z06. That could easily be 2023 and then this gs grand sport 2024 so thomas says i think the z06 will be able to put that power down better than the c7 z06 could yeah definitely definitely it is more rear weight bias than the c7 and um yeah with the dual clutch as well it's going to be 
<laughs> very fast, very fast. So let's look at the Grand Sport. This is another interesting one. Normally, the Grand Sport gets the same engine as the Stingray and Z51, or the Z51 version of the Stingray, which automatically gets that performance exhaust. Now they're saying the Grand Sport is going to be a hybrid, same LT2 engine, but with a hybrid bumping it to 600 horsepower, which is a lot. Uh, I mean, that's a lot of power. Uh, basically, a 100 horsepower electric motor is what, what we're going to say here uh, to add over the 500 horsepower of the Stingray and then torque up to 500. Now, we did see some spy shots of an electric or a hybrid C8. The drive here has this article, but it is, it, okay, here, here we go. Showing the plug here in the front. I believe it's going to be all front electric motors, no electric in the rear. I believe they're going to put the batteries where the storage is in front here. So it's pretty much going to wipe out that front cargo area, unfortunately, to fit those motors and batteries right there. And it's going to be a heavy car. It's going to be real heavy. And um, Thomas says, front wheel hybrid making it semi-all-wheel drive. A absolutely. It's going to be, this is this is the funny part. It's going to be all-wheel drive uh, with probably 100 horsepower up front. Uh, it's not going to be enough power. Uh, the rear is going to be way more powerful than the front, which is fine. That's good. Uh, if, you, if you guys saw that hybrid RAV4 video I did, and actually I want to thank everybody for watching it if you watch it, because that helped me get this 86, uh, because it has close to 5,000 views. And um, that, you know, Toyota sees that and they say, okay, if you get views on it, we'll give you more press vehicles. So appreciate everybody watching that. And if you could watch this 86 one too. But anyway, uh, in that video, the rear had the electric motor for the all wheel drive and the fronts would overpower it. So it would spin the front wheels and the, and the rear did not have enough power with the electric motor to not, you know, it, it, it was a disconnected feeling. So fortunately, this is the opposite. I'd rather have less power up front. <laughs> but the funny thing is, which no one's talking about, but if this has an electric only mode, it will be front wheel drive. This will be a front wheel drive Corvette <laughs> in electric only mode. So <laughs> what do you guys think about that? If it has electric only mode, a lot of these hybrids don't really work. I mean, maybe like five mile an hour or so they they can go in electric only, but but that that just uh, that's kind of funny. Um, it's it's come full circle. Like everybody wanted all wheel drive, finally getting all wheel drive, and now uh, now it's going to be front wheel drive too. But this uh, this picture is kind of funny because it has a I guess it's some sort of emissions equipment in the back to measure the emissions. So. Surprisingly, that they care. I mean, well, I guess they have to measure it, but um, all I know is going to be very heavy with all those batteries and motor. And uh, I don't know how much gas mileage extra it's going to get. I think it's more going to be performance. You know, it's going to have more power. So this is kind of interesting to me. I don't know how I feel about it, though. Tech says, I'm glad they're making the engine for the Grand Sport in between the Z06 and the base. I always felt the Grand Sport needed a bump from the base model. Yeah, um, but traditionally it never did get that bump for some reason. I mean, they gave it the Z51 bump, which is a few horsepower because of the performance exhaust. But uh, yeah, that's interesting that they're actually um gonna give it a bump this time but what does that do to price as well um you know that the z06 is supposed to start at eighty five thousand. uh the stingray starts at 60 so maybe 70 75 then for the grand sport to start yeah it's 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 an interesting times we live in but all right, let's move on then to the next one, which is 
probably, this says 2024, probably 2025 time frame, maybe even later, is the next ZR1. And the ZR1's going to get, they're going to call it an LT7, but it's going to go at a twin turbo version of the Z06 engine. So the 5.5 liter twin turbo. I'm, it's unclear if the twin turbo will be flat plane crank or not, because usually forced induction does not get flat, flat plane crank, and it usually doesn't spin as fast. Uh, 9,000 RPM, you know, uh, for a twin turbo. So I'm guessing it's not going to be flat plane crank, but uh, still a version of that engine. Uh, Thomas says, take my money. I don't know if you mean which which version, Thomas, the Grand Sport or the ZR1. But, um, yeah, this is going to be pretty cool. Never a turbo Corvette, I don't think. I mean, at least not in production form. So this is going to turbo instead of supercharger, which the uh, it's traditionally been supercharged, the top engine. So interesting, interesting. And, and also, this is, I'm sure, a version of the Blackwing Cadillac engine that's no longer in production. Now, that's 4.2 liter. But it's the same twin turbo uh, hot V engine. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be based on that. Even though they said, "Oh, it's never going to. We're never going to use the Blackwing in anything else." Well, it's not the Blackwing. It's it's a larger displacement version of the Blackwing. So, um, Mike Martin says lost sound. Uh, skip ahead, Mike. Hopefully, uh, the beginning I know was not working for me unfortunately but uh thomas says gs okay so thomas you are interested in that hybrid version well <laughs> one more there might be another hybrid that you would be interested in then there's going to be a model on top of the zr1 and that's going to be called the corvette zora and they're saying 2025 it's probably going to be later 2020s. I can't see them every year coming out with a new one. I mean, it's possible, but especially if it's selling well, they'll probably stretch it out a little longer. But anyway, it's going to have the 5.5 liter twin turbo of the ZR1 plus that hybrid motor, which you know adds another 100 horsepower or so. In this case, 150 horsepower. So again, front wheel, all-wheel drive Corvette. And um, a thousand horsepower to a thousand horsepower. So yeah, Thomas says I don't have Zora money. Yeah, how much do you think we're gonna get to? Because the current ZR1 is what like a hundred and thirty. Well, I could say current, but the C7 ZR1 was like what a hundred and thirty or so. I figure this ZR1. Is the C8 ZR1 is going to be 150, and then the Zora probably 170. So we're going to push 200 grand for a Corvette if you can believe it. But that's you know they they want to compete with the exotics, and it's still you know at the Zora level way cheaper. Than a P1, you know, million dollar machines that um, La Ferrari, all of them over a million dollars with the with the hybrid setup. So that's uh, that's what we're looking at. I I pretty much believe this report. I don't see anything here that's you know extraordinary. I think it's all doable. The time frames are probably off, but, um, you know, that's, it's, it's something, something for sure. Uh, you might've cut off the bottom there. I see now that my face was in the way, so I'll uh, move it up there. But, um, car girl 11 says a thousand horsepower. That's about what I need. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's going to be some scary car, but it is going to be all-wheel drive. That'll help. 
And uh, from what I hear, the C8 is a really easy car to drive. I'd love to drive one. I hope I get an opportunity to do that this year. If anyone has one, please let me know. Love to review one. But, um, but yeah, that's what we're looking at. And that's the main thing I wanted to talk about today. But, all right, I'm going to close this. I'm going to hopefully cut off the beginning of this video if uh, if it caught all of the silence part of it. But um, but thanks for joining me tonight. I'm going to hopefully find a better solution for future live streams. Definitely uh, stay tuned again to Instagram and Facebook where I'll post um, when I'm going to do them. And usually I only give like a day's notice or so. so. But anyway, guys. Hope you're staying safe. Hope you're doing well. And uh, stay tuned for future videos. I'll take it easy, guys.